this time on snowmobiler television gold member is hitting the trails oh boy this might have been a mistake oh, oh, oh. <laughs> STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Ultimax belts, performance driven, performance proven. And by Polaris, think outside. All right, so here's the setup on today's ride. I was looking for a place to go on the old Inviter Gold Member here, a ride that wasn't too far away or wasn't too close either, and I think I found the perfect destination to go to today, and that's Eganville, Ontario. Now, it's gonna be an adventure, because we're starting from Brayside, and we're gonna ride all the way up to Eganville, Ontario for the Bonnechere Cup race that's being held this weekend, and that is about 72 kilometers each way. And I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Joining me on this ride is Steve Duffy from Yamaha, and he'll be on a similar size sled as the old Inviter with a brand new Venom. Both these beauties are prepped and ready to hit the trails of the Ottawa Valley heading up to Eganville. Actually, that's a lie. I have no idea if Gold Member is ready or not, but in case you're wondering, there is insurance and a weekend trail pass on this thing, so legally it's ready. Mechanically, I have no clue. Now we could have easily done this ride on a couple of sidewinders or something like that, but that would have been too easy and I really wanted to get out on the Inviter. Plus, I thought riding it alongside this massive Venom would be quite fun. So we're going to start our journey from Steve's here in Brayside and let's find out what happens. Because I have no idea what's going to happen. Now Gold Member seems fine. I mean, I rode it for a few kilometers in the fields behind the shop without problems, so it's got to be good, right? Now, of course, out on the trail, you start thinking about things like oil in the chain case, the state of the steering components, the fact that you never greased anything, or even have the sled up on its side to look at the runners of the track. But it's moving, so that means it's got to be good. What's funny is seeing these two sleds side by side. It's almost comical how small the Inviter is. And the Venom absolutely towers over the sled and it's seven eighths the size of a normal machine. Now performance wise, the Venom also destroys the Inviter in every way, except for the feeling of riding a Barker lounger down the trails. In this one aspect, the Inviter dominates. Thinking about these two sleds and how they were both brought to market to essentially fulfill the same goal of expanding the snowmobile market beyond traditional models makes me see how far the snowmobile industry has come. Each sled is completely different and a product of their times. The Inviter is pretty neat and so far fun to ride on the trails, but the Venom is so much more capable. There really isn't a compromise with that machine at all. With the near 40 year difference in model years, it really does make you think what we'll be riding in another 40 years. I just hope I'll still be able to ride at that time. Actually, I just hope I'll still be able to ride after today. But right now, to make sure I'll still have a sled to keep riding today, I felt a quick inspection was in order. So we pulled off in Renfrew to have a look to see how Goldmember was doing. This thing's been running great. I'm slightly concerned about the amount of rubber that's starting to happen behind the window though. So I'm gonna just open this up and see Belt deflection is about six inches. That's fine, right? That's that's where they're yeah, supposed to be on these. Yeah. You know what? I think it's I think it's pretty good. There is a rhythmic thumping that's coming out of the track, though. So I'm a little worried about that. We might just flip it over, check the track out. But uh, but yeah, this is officially the farthest I've ever ridden this, like 30k, and uh, we're doing good. But yeah, it's that. See all that rubber dust? Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, ah, ah. Do that with a sidewinder. Yeah. But, uh, oh, I think I might have found a bearing. It's a little tight. That's just a little tight. Obviously, with the bearing not working, it doesn't need it. So we're going to pull it right off. All right, so, yeah, evidently it did not need that, uh, that bogey on there. So we fixed it by removing it. 
I'll put it in the trunk, which is the handiest thing ever. You know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this ride with the inviter and uh, back there Steve's on a Venom because I mean it's sort of a mid-sized sled but back then I mean the, the inviter next to the Venom, the Venom looks massive. I mean it's unbelievable how big it is and no wonder you know newbie riders, novice riders today are somewhat intimidated by the size and scope of the modern snowmobile because they are so big and when you see the inviter, I mean, it was a small machine back in the day too, but it is so small. But that's that's what made it, I think, easier for people to get into snow, snowmobiling back then was the machines just were a lot easier to to ride and just go out and have fun with. I and mean, they weren't capable of speeds that were as crazy as the stuff is now to uh, to scare people with. And you know, the inviter, you know, it sort of did that back in the day. Maybe, yeah, Yamaha missed the mark a little bit. But when you look at the Venom, again, it's still, it's mid-size now. Big for comparing it to the inviter. But, you know, it does such a great job of, you know, giving a great snowmobile experience to riders that, you know, don't want 200 horsepower, you know, Sidewinder or... The, the big machines they just want something that's easy to handle easy to ride friendly you know people who are buying those sleds don't need a sled don't want a sled that goes that fast you know the venom can be a machine you can hop on that anybody can hop on go and have a great time with and just enjoy themselves out snowmobiling which i suppose was the original intent of the inviter but uh I got blue belt. This is a blue belt. Hey, what's coming out of the bush here? That was weird. I thought it was a Yeti coming out of the bush. We got a snowshoer that just popped out of the ditch. I've never seen that before. Fun times. Not regretting this decision at all yet. Got lots of riding left to do to regret. But for right now, the inviter is absolutely providing a great snowmobile experience. Gold member is, uh, is the bomb right now. The inviter is definitely the Paja of the Venom. Getting all the way up to the race was accomplishment number one for Gold Member, which I was absolutely stunned by. I did not think it was going to make it, especially after it started misfiring with about two kilometers to go. But it did arrive under its own steam. This sled is amazing. I still have to ride home, but I'll worry about that later. Coming up after the break, we're going to hang out at the track here for a little while before heading back on the Rockets. This segment is brought to you by Kane's Quest. This is the 47th running of the Bonnechere Cup held here in Eganville, Ontario at one of the last great ice oval tracks left in the province. And it's back now in 2023, the first time in a few years since being canceled due to COVID. What a great way to spend a day out on a sled and I wasn't the only one who rode here to Eganville. For folks who did ride to the event, there was a dedicated area to watch from outside the track going into turn one, which is a prime location to check out the action. The Bonacher Cup has a great grassroots feel to it. There's great access all the way around the track from the spectator area or into the paddock, and you can enjoy all kinds of sights and sounds when it comes to racing. It was awesome to get out to another race event where there was such a great turnout of both spectators and competitors. Now the weekend did start off rather chilly with temps deep into the negative 20s on Saturday, but today on Sunday, conditions are much better which brought the crowds to the race. And to tell us a little bit more about the event, I ran into a familiar face manning the announcer booth. Phil Malta was here, lending his voice to the day. Eagleville, Ontario, home of the Bonner Share Cup. Thousands and thousands of 
You know, it's funny, after retiring from media and snowmobile sports, I'm back in it, but I'm here announcing. I'm a volunteer announcer. Uh, for years, I got to go to racing events, get involved in racing, come to these great events, and now I'm helping support them. There's so many volunteers, like from our club, the OSOR, who are involved in the racing, all the people in Eagleville. It takes so many people to make an event like this happen. So I'm volunteering. I, I you know, turn 60 soon, so it's my time to give back to the sport like so many people have done. So I'm here announcing, using my annoying voice, to tell people what's happening on the track and call the play-by-play. -play. I'm having a great time. My bucket list of snowmobiling is filled up 15 times over. So we work with the you know, snowmobiler tell you, I got to go to British Columbia, Montana, Colorado. I got the snowmobile up through the interior of BC, into Noranda, Quebec, White Court, Alberta, none of it. My list is so full, I, I can't describe people. So I'm smiling all the time. Even yesterday out here at minus 33 degrees, I'm still smiling because it, it's a great sport in every aspect of snowmobiling, whether it's racing, riding mountains, trail riding, helping build trails, everything about the sport is awesome. And I'm just glad I could still be a part of it. First going into turns one and two. And it is tight coming in turn two down the back straight of the here at the bottom here, Cup of Speedway in Eagleville, Ontario. Eagleville, Ontario, home of the Florida Santa's Florida Santa Cup. You know, it reminds me of some of the old NASCAR tracks in the south on the Winston Cup years and stuff. You find these places and they're not around. This is still here. We don't have Owen Sound. We don't have Peterborough because the city's expanded. So do the rec facilities. Here, this is the last of the great ovals and it's big. You get out there and you try racing this track. There is so much room in the corners. It's like Beaujolais, wide corners, big straightaways, maximum speed, maximum use of the engine, lots of places to pass. So it's an exciting track. It's a historic track. I mean, the Eagleville people here, Amazing, there's hundreds of thousands of gallons of water to build this track. And then the week before you start watching that forecast, what happens if it hits plus three? What if it hits minus 30 like it did? What do you do with all these conditions? The track is amazing how it's held up. And, and to build it and to deal with the conditions, like everything in snow building, you make plans on Tuesday and Friday night. You don't know if you, a lot of people couldn't even get to the track. We had a lot of people, their trucks wouldn't start, so they try and get a ride with their competitors to get here. We had a power road too with the real cold and it was, a, it was for a large area. So we didn't know if we'd have power for a whole day. So suddenly, you know, good old people in small town Canada, out come the generators and the electrician is like, how do we get through this? Well, okay, we can do this, this, and this, and you work your way back with a game plan. So small town Eagleville, you gotta love the way they do stuff. With such a fun day in the works, there was one more nagging concern in the back of my mind though, actually two. The first was wondering if Goldie would even start after arriving running on half a cylinder, but the next thing was thinking about how rough the trails were going to be after seeing all the sleds here at the race. The adventure definitely was going to continue today. Not just good, good enough. Coming up after the break, I'm gonna hit the trails again with Gold Member. Hopefully, it'll take me all the way home. This segment is brought to you by Polaris. And we got her going. So, our adventure continues. Cross some fingers that we're gonna get home. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. You know, this thing is probably just too stupid to know it shouldn't be running. So we'll just bounce along down the trail. Definitely have to say, oh, these things are rough. Oh my God. Good day though. Let's see. So today we started out this morning. We left around 9.30, 10 o'clock from from just outside of Armprior and Grayside, and then rode 80 kilometers up to the Bonnechere Cup in Eganville. Had a good afternoon in Eganville. Weather was way better than yesterday, where it was crispy cold yesterday, it was just nice today. And uh, now we're riding back down to, uh, back to Steve's place and homemade lasagna that my mom did up. I mean, if we can get there in one piece, it's gonna be an epic day. Definitely an adventure. 
honestly wasn't sure if this thing was going to make it out of the parking lot at, uh, at the cup race. I think we got some wiring issues and maybe, maybe a bad plug. But I mean, I, I knew it. I, I was thinking ahead. You know, riding old stuff, you ride around with plugs in your pocket. So this morning I threw a couple of BR9s in the old hip pocket there. And uh, just for such an emergency. And it, whoa, that was close to a tree. This thing is all over the place. I just never know where it's going to go. Good thing the trees are right close to the edge of the trail. Oh, here we go. You know, it's at this point, when you're doing this on a old sled, 87, and you got really rough trails, you start to think about stuff. Right now, I'm thinking about my steering. And, whoa! Whether or not all the nuts and bolts are in good shape, that, uh, you know, it doesn't have 30 some odd years of wear on it, and getting thin to get hit by a, a big sucker bump. Oh, I got three behind. You know, you have a big sucker bump behind you, get hit, and next thing you know, the old inviter takes a hard right into the bush, you know. And with the, the comfy back seat on this, the backrest, you're just not getting away. You're going with it, it's taking you. It wants you to ride it, it does not let you off. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. If this thing survives this pounding, I'm going to be suitably impressed. I think we fixed our electrical problem. I think it was mostly, <laughs> mostly the plug. Got to go simple sometimes. Oh, look at this one. Oh, that danger! Thanks, dangers after the freaking danger. Somebody needs to put the signs ahead of the danger, so you know there's danger there. Oh, oh, that hurts. So while my back continues to disintegrate, we're gonna head back to Steve's place tonight for dinner, and then tomorrow, after all the over-the-counter drugs kick in, oh, oh, we're gonna we're gonna finish the show. My God, my back hurts. Oh, are we there yet? This segment is brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. All right, so it's a brand new day. We've had a chance for the ibuprofen to take effect. <laughs> and yeah, that's uh, for sure. Steve, it was a pretty good day yesterday. It was epic. That's the only word to describe it, right? Look, I followed you on that thing yesterday, and we were in some pretty gnarly trails. I was impressed. This thing, uh, we used all of it yesterday. It's, it's a little- <laughs> And some more. It's a little s stiff right now, but anyways. It made it. It was surprising. It yeah. was very surprising. And you know, like this thing here, it, this wasn't necessarily like a mid-size sled like the Venom is, but I, I can't get over how small it is compared to this machine that you rode. You know, it's not per se a kid snowmobile like a Scoot or an SRX 120. Not quite a full-size snowmobile, but I rode it yesterday and yeah, it it's, performed... it's completely capable as a full-size yes. snowmobile. And, you know, our entry-level customers are, are customers who don't want the Sidewinder or don't need a Viper. They, this snowmobile was very capable of that. And yeah. um, Exactly. Well, I mean, when this was new in 87, you know, snowmobiles weren't that much bigger than this. But nowadays, snowmobiles are so much more intimidating to have a sled like the Venom to be able to kind of get involved in the industry and, and, and build your passion and your skill set as a snowmobiler. I mean, what better class of, of machine is there than, than this class? Well, yeah, the platform is good for that, to getting people back into the sport or people come back into the sport who have left it numerous years ago when sleds are a little different, sort of like this, L with a lower different. suspension, heavier, um, you well, know, this has smaller no smaller fuel tanks. There, there is no suspension <laughs> on this. Let's, let's just let's just stop that argument right there. There is no suspension on this whatsoever. Okay, this vehicle was meant for groove trail operation. Yeah, it, 
even then debatable. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. a sled like this, I think I'm, I, I'm good with this sled now. I'd rather get on that or maybe a Sidewinder or something because that's, that's a little bit more my speed. I think I'm going to go back to that. Yeah, it was a huge amount of fun. Um, not going to lie, when we left here yesterday morning, I figured if we made it the first 20K with the Telltale, we were either going to leave it on the trail or drag it back here. But after 20K, I was pretty confident it yep. was going to make it there and back, no issues. And we really didn't have any. So. No, and, and as it was getting later yesterday, I think probably for the last uh, at least two thirds of the trip, this thing was wide open the whole way. It really didn't get a break and it, it still made it, which is amazing. So anyways, that, it was an awesome day experience yesterday. Uh, great to see all the participation at Eganville yesterday with the, with the folks there on their snowmobiles and some great racing. Um, we had good temperatures, better than Saturday where there were minus 100 and something. But uh, <laughs> yeah, what a great day to be a snowmobiler. I just want to thank you for uh, coming up with this idea and inviting me along. I had a, it was a great time. It brought back, well, following you, it did make me chuckle a few times, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great fun. It was great fun to see uh, the, the looks on people's faces when we rolled into the Bonisher Cup. Uh, yeah, it, it was fun. It was a fun. couple of people didn't believe me that I rode it there. Well, you did have some fans come up that had seen your, you know, your episode and yeah. uh, they were, uh, they were, you followed through. You uh, said you were going to do something and yeah. you did it and it was good. And it, it, was, really was, good. it was real. This thing made it. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Until next time, get the old stuff out of the barn, out of the shed, out of the garage, wherever you got that stuff hidden away and go and ride it because it is a heck of a lot of fun, but it also makes you appreciate how good new snowmobiles can be. Until next time, ride safe. Closed captioning is brought to you by Polaris. STV has been brought to you by CKX, wear your passion. Best Western Hotels and Resorts, ready to get away, and by On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers. Yeah.